Hi, this is Steve Rowe, Executive Director. Today is Wednesday, June 30th, uh, and it happens to be the last day of our fiscal year. Um, we had board meeting this morning. Uh, typically that happens on the fourth Wednesday of the month. Uh, because I was on vacation earlier this month and June happens to be a five Wednesday month, we were able to, to push it back a week. Uh, so, so we did have a board meeting this morning and one of the things that I shared with our board, uh, we've been talking about COVID on a monthly basis since March of 2020. Um, starting in July, we're planning not to talk about COVID as a standing agenda item in our, in our monthly board meeting. Um, the case counts uh, in Johnson County, when we looked at that on Monday and updated our tracking, uh, were down to below two new cases per day for the uh, most recent two week period. And the positivity rate continues to hover just above 1%. Um, so where it's at 1.1% positivity, and it, uh, right or wrong, it feels like we're turning a corner, at least within Johnson County. As I say that, I was listening on the radio this morning and there are parts of, of Missouri right now which happens to have very low vaccination rates um, that like they've, they've quadrupled the number of hospitalizations in the last month uh, with the Delta variant of COVID. So hopefully we can continue to, to, uh, to be at the, the very low levels that we are in Johnson County currently uh, and not have to talk about it on a weekly or a monthly basis. Um, and we of course will uh, let you know, we'll continue to monitor and if, if we need to change our practices, we'll certainly uh, let you know as we have through the entire 16 month period. Uh, but it's like going forward, at least at a, at a monthly board meeting, we won't have that as a, as a standing agenda item any longer. Um, as I mentioned, this is the last day of our fiscal year and we're ending the year with some very, very positive momentum. Um, I've, I've shared kind of along the way where we are from an entrance fee sales goal uh, and we are currently at 86% uh, with two contracts that, that were signed yesterday. Uh, so that what that means is that our goal for this fiscal year was 6.2 million and we've actually signed 5.3 million of entrance fee contracts for the year. Uh, which is below budget, but in the pandemic year, uh, we're actually very pleased with, with that progress. And we've gone from 65% of our goal uh, when we did the May board meeting to 86% of our goal for the June board meeting. So a 21% increase over the last 30 days. Uh, we have signed six new life care contracts in the month of June, and we've We've also had one uh, internal upgrade contract, uh, so, so that's accounted for 21% of our full year sales goal just in, in the last month. So uh, again, very positive momentum. And I also want to uh, mention one of the six new life care contracts that we signed is with uh, Lisa Chapman's mom. Uh, so Lisa has been at Oaknell for 37 years uh, in, and is currently our business manager. So she does payroll processing for all of our employees and she does the resident billing process. Uh, and to have somebody who has worked at Oaknell for so long uh, to have her family member uh, joining the community is just a huge honor. And it, I think it says a lot about the commitment that our staff has to the service and, and quality that we are trying to provide to all of you every day and that we would actually have our family members uh, want, to, want to join the Oaknell community. So uh, Lisa's mom is Liz Garriott. Uh, she will be moving into apartment uh, 304, uh, hopefully sometime uh, by September. Uh, so be looking for, for Liz. Um, we do continue to have some apartments available and some, some really good spaces. So there are three apartments that recently became available in the George building uh, due to transitions to assisted living or to the health center. Uh, so those are all uh, nice two bedroom apartments. We also have two apartments in, um, in the Benton building that are also good two bedroom apartments uh, and uh, one from a transition to assisted living and one from an internal 
internal relocation. Uh, and then we continue to have spaces available at our east campus. Uh, there are currently two apartments on hold, but we have eight additional apartments that we're still trying to find matches for. Uh, so if you know of anybody, please send them my way. Uh, I will be over at the East Campus uh, shortly after I record this message. I've got back-to-back -back prospective resident appointments at East uh, as we work to try to find matches for those last few apartments. Um, I've mentioned uh, the last time I did a, a video update about staffing challenges, and that continues to be a very real uh, issue for us. Uh, effective tomorrow, July 1st, uh, our COVID uh, vaccination uh, is a condition of employment. Um, and we've had a few individuals who have chosen to leave employment at Oak Knoll rather than be vaccinated. Uh, three of them are within our nursing department and one is as a cook. Um, so we're, we continue to have staffing challenges within nursing uh, with certified nursing assistants and nurses uh, and also cooks are the, the two primary areas that, that were uh, in need of staff. Um, it is going to have an impact on our service delivery. In the health center, clearly, we have to have staff. Uh, so we've got people who are picking up extra shifts uh, going into overtime fairly frequently to, to make sure that we have adequate staffing to care for the residents uh, who we need to in the health center. Uh, for cooks, that's not really an option. Uh, it, the, the only thing that we can do when we are short of cooks is to, uh, to limit or change how we're providing service. Uh, so uh, when the weekly memo comes out tomorrow, there will be a, a notification about some changes changes within dining services uh, for what we need to do until we are able to get back to fully staffed. So again, if you know of anybody who is looking for a cook position, looking for an environmental services position, looking for a nursing position, whether it's a professional nurse or a certified nursing assistant, uh, we have jobs and it's like, and, and it's like we would love to talk with candidates for those jobs. Um, and the other thing to be aware of is this is not just an Oak Knoll issue. This is everywhere right now. Uh, when I was on vacation, it's like uh, in Myrtle Beach a couple of weeks ago, every single restaurant that we walked into, uh, the very first thing that you saw was a sign on the door saying, we are short staffed. We are gonna do the best we can to provide service to you, but please be patient with us. Uh, when I got back from vacation, the very first place that we went into uh, happened to be Sam's Pizza. Uh, and there was a, a note on the door hiring all positions, servers, cooks, dishwashers, uh, every single restaurant in town, it seems like, is in need of staff. Uh, so this is not just an Oak Knoll issue. I think what we offer as an employer is different than, than a lot of, of, of other organizations in terms of our culture and the ability to develop relationships with the customers that we serve rather than just have it be a transactional uh, relationship where they're providing service and then they never see that person again. So, so we've got a unique opportunity and it is a great place to work work. Uh, many of us have been for a, here for a long, long time and know that, but we need to find the next generation of Oak Knoll employees. So anything you can do to help us with that, we would greatly appreciate. Thank you very much. I hope you're all having a great day and we'll talk with you again in two weeks.